All right, everybody, this is Ross. I got some really interesting fruits to share with you guys. This one has been uh, pretty impressive. I actually took my cousin here on a little tour of the backyard. We got some lunch together one day, quite recently. And I was showing him all the different fruits and he was tasting different things. And this was actually his favorite fruit out of all the fruits I shared with him that day. Um, unfortunately, I don't think he had a really great gumi. He didn't have any gumis to try. He hasn't tried the Marion Berry. He hasn't tried the uh, black raspberry, and he hasn't tried the a really good honey berry. But this, I think, is right up his alley because if you're someone that really enjoys something that's a bit more intense, maybe not just straight sweet and that's it, this has got some wild flavor to it, some complexity to it, some good berry flavor to it. This is one of the best berries. It's so easy to grow. It's so vigorous. It's in the Ribes family, by the way. So this. Yosta berry is a cross between the gooseberry and the currant. The gooseberry, by the way, we just did a video on that. It's one of my favorites. It's so pleasant and so fun and so tart to eat. It's just like eating a grape. And it just ripens at an earlier point of the season. I basically get grapes all year because of this. Between the gooseberry, the grapes themselves, and then also the, the muscadine grapes, the American grapes they ripen later in the season in the fall this guy ripens right along the same time as you might expect like a black currant or the gooseberry here it's a bit later so maybe we're extending the season in some way but these red little berries this is a red i believe it's a red yosta berry i think that's the name of the variety if i'm not mistaken produces fruits that are quite similar in appearance to the gooseberry at least to this red this Hinomaki red gooseberry here that I have. If you didn't, if you had an untrained eye, you wouldn't almost really know. So can you pick out which one is which? The ones there at the top are the gooseberry and the one at the bottom are the Yosta berries. And uh, by the way, um, I'm not really, have not been a big fan of the currants. I actually ripped out all my currants. I sort of regret it because I actually value the antioxidants that are in them. And I, at some point I will replant them, not on this property, but in a future property. I haven't really had great success with the red currant making them into jam. They're supposed to make great jam and I haven't really been impressed. They it either molds or if I add too much sugar to them, to prevent the molding, they taste so sweet that it's just, it's unbearable um, combined with, you know, uh, the tartness of the fruit itself. The black currant, I have not been a fan of. I think they're decent to eat fresh, but they are, they're really for processing. You make them into other things. The gooseberry here is a fresh eating fruit. And I actually made them into raisins this season, highly recommend you give them a little poke with a toothpick and then put them in the dehydrator. I think they turn out a little bit better like that, but they're so sweet, they're so good. Like I said, it's like eating a grape. There's not much difference. The uh, Josta berry though, is supposed to combine the both. So the, the crazy processing and amazing flavor that comes from the black currant. And you're supposed to be able to take that flavor Add it into something that's pleasant like this gooseberry and have something that is next level, right? It's kind of like when you cross a cherry with a plum or, you know, a pluot, let's say, is a, like an apricot with a, with a plum or a peach with a nectarine or any of those stone fruit combinations. They're all in the same family, right? Same thing with the yosta berry, the, the ribes, the, right, the, the gooseberry and the currants, they all kind of you can cross them together very easily and create these new fruits. So that's not like, oh, we're creating some genetic engineering type thing. This is all natural. This is just normal. So this is a really intensely flavored, but as they become more red like this, as they start to ripen finally, they become very, very good. My cousin is not far off. He has a good palate, I would say, and uh, 
this is, if somebody's out there who really likes those more intense fruits, you love a nice dark red wine, like a nice Cabernet that's bold, or a Barolo or Barbaresco, a Tanat that's got some good characters to it, that's got these good berry flavors and complexities to it. This is a fruit you're gonna love. And you'd also probably love things like the Alpine strawberries, the Marionberry, the Honeyberry, um, black raspberries, a lot of the figs that taste like berries. Uh, you're gonna be blown away, I think, by this particular fruit. It's got just a really intense flavor to it. But it's not like eating a black currant. Those black currants are a little too much for me. I don't enjoy them that much. And they usually ripen at the same time as other fruits. So, you know, I would rather go for those other fruits. That's why I ripped them out. Why give the space to something that I'm not really eating? I'm kind of neglecting it. I'm not processing it well. Don't really know what I'm doing in that sense. So, you know, I'd rather just take them out and then say the hell with it. I'd rather just uh, have a gooseberry as an example. But this is a nice compromise. That's a very good piece of fruit. And um, I don't know if I like one more or the other. I think it depends on the day. See, here's the thing, right? You like the sweeter fruits, go for the gooseberry. You like the more tart or more, slightly more complex fruits, you go with the Osterberry. By the way, that plant, I just stuck a cutting in the ground. I wanna say, ah, man, maybe like two or three years ago, and this is what it looks like. Like, this is probably its third season, I would say. Yeah, that's about right. So this is its third season from cutting and it's insanely vigorous. So looks amazing. Look at this branch up here. Um, so that's gonna be really productive next year, although not that productive yet. Here's another one where I took, actually I believe this is a different variety. I don't think I took cuttings off of this. And this one's a lot more productive in a much shadier environment, by the way. These plants do so well in the shade. They're so problem free. There's, you can plant these pretty much anywhere and they're gonna produce. And it's gonna be reliable. You don't have to go to some crazy lengths to care for these things. You just net them. And I, I didn't even net these. I don't know if the birds even know what these things are. Here's one here. Let me pick this. See if this one, this one seems very ripe. And I don't know what the variety, this, there's a black ghostberry and there's a red I think I have. I don't believe they're the same. I hope they're not the same. Let's, let's taste it and find out. Whoa. Whoa. Not the same. That one's really good. I think, honestly, that's way better than uh, the other one, but perhaps maybe because it's so ripe that it's uh, very, very enjoyable. So let me try one that's a little less ripe. So this has got even more of a compromise. It's really intense flavor, but it's sweet. It's really good, like a gooseberry. That one tastes more like a black currant. So this one's got like black currant, I think, in it. And it's too intense unless you, unless you really get it ripe. Maybe if I pick one of these red ones, this might be a really ex like flavor explosion in my mouth. Um, yeah, let's try one of these. We'll really know, I think, at this point. Yeah. So they, they really taste like currants, black currants. I wouldn't even say this other one. I think this, um, this red Yostaberry doesn't even, if it has any red currant in it, doesn't remind me of red currant. They both sort of remind me of black currants. At least that's what I would guess that their parentage has, is these black currants in them. And that's kind of what you get, is that they're pretty much all black currant until that final stage of ripening when they get perfect like that. And then they really shine with the gooseberry flavor. And I, yeah, I'm impressed. I think that's actually a really good piece of fruit. I would argue this black yostaberry in the corner there basically gets no sunlight. 
is uh, I think better than the gooseberry. If I had a, if I had to just put one ahead of the other, it's very slight, but there's some of my favorite fruits. The ribes, I highly recommend you guys try it. Again, super easy to grow. Don't even care for them. They're easy to net. They're kind of small, easy to pick. The Yosta berries don't have thorns. So yeah, kids, they're gonna love them. And the amount of antioxidants, I think, in these fruits is totally worth it just for your health. I mean, like I said, I'm gonna probably try the white currants at some point, but get back the red and the black currants. Have myself uh, a little bit extra antioxidants in my microbiome for my microbiome. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care, hit, or take care, <laughs> take care. Hit that subscribe button for me, guys. This is such an informative video. I don't know if there's another video out there that does the amount of detail on these particular fruits, like the gooseberry or the, the yosta berry as I have. I think this really explains well to a lot of new people who have never tried these fruits, what they're really like, so that before you decide to go ahead and purchase them, what is it that you're getting? You know, what are you getting into? is a pretty damn good example. So we'll see you for the next ones, all right? We do other fruits, not just the, the gooseberries, the yosta berries, but all the different fruits here in the orchard. This little section of my food forest, I guess you could call it. We'll see you soon. Like I said, take coon. All right, guys, bye-bye.